Yeah, Wendy, my distinguished fellow panelists, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here this evening to talk to you about the governance perspectives. Governance is indeed a critical factor for a good quality democracy. Democracy and dictatorship have one thing in common, that is they have suicidal tendency. Both are subject to suicidal tendencies because failure on the governance front. There's a book called End of Power by Moses Name, where he says that power is easy to acquire and very hard to exercise or wield and very easy to lose. This is what is happening in most of the democracies, even in the West, this is being realized that it is not so easy to wield power, but it is easy to acquire and lose it. Political parties are our weakest link in our democracy. Look at their constitution, their functioning, their um, internal financial accountability, and their internal feuds amongst themselves, pressure groups, speaks very little of our democratic discipline in India. Of course, we can derive some satisfaction that probably we are better off when compared to some of the other countries in Asia and Africa. But then the political parties contribute a lot to the corruption as well as inefficiency in the system. Most of the political masters feel that they have to bear this in mind whenever the policies are framed, with the result that populism takes over and you don't find an efficient management of matters. Now, one of the few things that I would like to emphasize here is the bureaucrats generally had a higher reputation in the early 60s and 70s, but in the course of subsequent years, not because that I joined in 63, but the point is over a period of time, there has been steady deterioration and bureaucrats are finding it more and more difficult to assert themselves. So one of the things that the Supreme Court suggested was that the instructions by political masters should be given only in writing. I had a very uh, nasty experience. One of the ministers asked me to do something. So I sent a three-page report note saying that it cannot be done. And at the end of it, I said, if the minister still wants, let him give written directions, and which will, of course, be implemented. The minister calls me at 11 o'clock in the night and says, how you send such a proposal to me? How, do I, how can I uh, give a written direction? I said, it's for you to decide whether your decision is better than mine. But I hold on to my view that it cannot be done. The file came back without any direction. The point is that it is necessary for the bureaucrats to assert themselves. In a, in a situation where there is a coalition government, which is becoming the order of the day, it is necessary for the bureaucrats to assert themselves because they otherwise they're equally culpable of bad governance in this country. And it is their duty to advise. In fact, when the Right to Information Act was passed, there was a big debate whether the notings in the file should be made available to the public. I strongly believe it should be made available to the public. But unfortunately, it is not so. It is not being done. It is not being implemented. But that is, be that as it may, the, a time has come when the steel frame which was supposed to be guarding this country in the early years of independence has to assert itself now. And it is necessary to ensure that the political masters are kept in check. We are all aware the Shah Commission's report, of which copies are not available in the government, I am told, though some reprint has been brought about by one of the members of the Shah Commission, one of the parliamentarians who has brought it out. It is necessary for all of us to go through those recommendations of Shah Commission, wherein very clearly it has been indicated that the duty of the civil servants as well as politicians is first to the Constitution. And unfortunately, it has not been given the pride of place that it ought to deserve. There is abundance of life in this country, vibrant, chaotic, and tumultuous. Democracy is really very uh, vibrant in this country. But then when you look at a little more closely, you find there is more of freedom and less of accountability. This is the problem. If we can ensure a, a compromise in terms of both the political masters and the bureaucratic class, 
certainly we can deliver a good quality democracy in this country. What are the th few things which you should consider? One, as far as the political corruption is concerned, there is a need for looking into the funding of elections. That's the starting point of poor governance in this country. At the, at the moment, corporates and individuals are allowed to contribute to political parties, and they get 50% tax exemption under certain conditions. The company law prescribes those conditions. Having been a member of the com Department of Company Affairs, I can certainly say that many of the companies are guilty of having a, an obnoxious nexus with the politicians. And it is necessary to look at the question of funding of elections. If, it is, if you want to really bring about, my suggestion is have a national election fund. Allow the corporates and the individuals to directly contribute to the national election fund and have 100% tax exemption. This fund could be used for funding of the elections, both for the candidates and for the government. If there is a deficiency, initially it ought to be deficient, the government should make good the difference and, conduct the, and ensure that the elections are conducted. If you, do not provide, if you do not provide state funding of elections, you will find that honest and efficient people will never step into the election uh, arena. There are some exemptions. For example, recently you have seen some very senior executives have come into the election arena. But I am not sure whether how they will be able to survive this particular, uh, you know, money power that is gaining ground in this country. They may uh, have enough uh, position or power to influence the elections. But I have my very serious reservations about honest and individual persons coming into the election arena. So it is necessary that the government should, or the new government should have a look into the the, the funding of elections and see that the nexus between the corporates and the political parties, uh, they are not allowed to continue. The nexus, in some people they have got over, for example, the Tata group have got their own trust and they provide funds to the political parties on the basis of the previous performance. But then I don't think it is going to really solve the problem because there are others who are willing to give cash donations and non-cash donations to the political parties. That is one. The second um, uh, in important suggestion I would like to make is the decentralization of powers. At the moment, the politicians are keen to become legislators, particularly the parliamentarians and the state legislators, because there are so much of powers available, so much of discretionary powers available, and they find it easy that they can spend money and, re, uh, and earn the same amount, or maybe more, to ensure that they get uh, power into their hands. The last point I would like to make is about the corporate governance. You know, the, recently the law has been amended and the corporate social responsibility uh, has been fixed on the cor corporates and they are supposed to spend 2% of the profits and so on. Now the question is, it is going to result in so much of funds available. Is it an answer to the def deficiencies or inefficiencies of the government? Partly yes, but then unless and until these funds are properly used, it is going to generate a fresh set of problems on the governance front. So it is necessary for the corporates to have a serious thinking on this, and it is not mere a committee of the board will decide CSR responsibilities, because although the guidelines have been given, I think it is going to generate a lot of problems in the matter of governance in this country, both corporate governance as well as the public governance. So it is necessary for the, the new government to give serious thought to some of the urgent areas because I personally feel as far as the central government is concerned, they should focus more on education, infrastructure, public health, apart from, of course, national defense and currency and so on. And more of these powers should be delegated to the lowest formation. Only then the politicians will not find it attractive to contest for the election and then try to make money out of it. Thank you very much for this opportunity.